So I, I went back to my diaries. So I always write down the visions that I see and the revelations that I get over nations, you know. And two years ago, I read the prophecy that the Lord gave me for the US. And in it, I, I saw written that evil spirits will come and open bottomless pit in several parts of the world, four places. And one is the US. And when the bottomless pit is open, tremendous spirits of violence will manifest. Hmm. They will come out and they will create havoc in the nation. When I read that, I had then understood what is happening now. All these gun killings, killings with guns and all the stuffs, ridiculous, merciless killings for no reason, right? They're killing for no reason. It's all the works of these evil spirits. And what is the reason? Shedding of innocent blood. And you continue to shed innocent blood. Now, listen people. God, out of his great grace, now gave you an opportunity to put things right by overturning the road versus weight law. It's an opportunity for you to repent. But what have you done? Protest against that. Hmm. Right? That's what you're doing. Now, I tell you one secret. If all the church, or all the Christians in the US will bend your knees and sincerely pray to stay the road versus weight bill, there is a window of grace for you. All it will take is for your president to appoint another liberal judge. And I tell you today what's going to happen tomorrow. They will re-undo what the Supreme Court has just passed and rever reverse, reverse it. If that happens, I'm sorry, you, will, you would have lost your last hope. I know Dr. White has been marshalling the nation for years to pray for the president when Mr. Trump was in office, pray for his safety. How much do we really pray? You know, whenever I get word from the Lord, specific word of protection for the president, like there were witchcraft being done against him. How many Christians took it seriously? I did. You don't simply care. You don't care. There's one a young man over there. He's from India. He told me a few days ago that Three of his friends, I suppose they are Americans, three of his American Christian friends, they purposely voted for Mr. Biden. So he asked them, why in the world would you Christians vote for Mr. Biden? You know what was the answer? Oh, we don't like Trump's personality. That was the answer. Foods. Not based on policy issues, mm -hmm. personality. So, you know, after he told me that, I pondered for a long time, just like these three Christians, how many millions of Christians in the US mm -hmm. had the same mind? Yes. Right, Dr. White? Yes. How many millions Christians had the same thought and they casted their vote against Mr. Trump. Mm -hmm. You 
You know, the scriptures tells us very clearly, it is God who appoints kings. It's God who appoints governments. So unless and until God permits, no one can simply come and sit on the chair. So don't, don't be, you know, cover yourself with all other kinds of whatever theories that are flooding your country. So, there are many, many mighty warrior angels. They are not just warrior angels. Their ranks are generals. They are generals in the Lord's army. They are present in this conference. And the saints of God, they are present in this conference. I've never seen such an activity of the heavenly kind in the previous conferences in Gettysburg. So this must be one reason why we are here in the capital. And also for two days in a row, I saw the chief prince angel of the United States of America hovering over the capital, which I will share with you on Saturday, what word they showed me. So I want to humbly say to you, each time you walk into this auditorium, enter with the fear of God in your heart. Do not be playful. Do not be frivolous. Do not talk and chat unnecessarily. If you want to talk or chat, do it outside this auditorium. This place has been marked holy unto the Lord. So from now till Sunday, when the conference ends, please maintain this holy attitude and this attitude of the fear of God. If you do that, then a piece of heavenly information will be deposited into your spirit and you will receive it and then God will give you words to pray or to act for the nation. You know, the scripture says very clearly, time will delay no longer. Time will delay no longer. Meaning, he will not keep on waiting and waiting and waiting forever. He won't do that. His time has come. You know, recently, NASA had sent up a space telescope called the James Webb Space Telescope. It has gone far out into space where no other space telescopes have ever been. And the mirrors and the cameras in the telescope are so powerful. Even the scientists at NASA are astounded at the pictures that this telescope is taking and sending back to NASA. While this is going on, in the last few months, scientists or astrophysicists at a, tele a, tele a teleport center in New South Wales, Australia, have been picking up sounds from the farthest part of the universe. Sounds like voice, which they do not know how to interpret, but they are coming at regular intervals from far out in the universe. You know what is happening? The coming of the Lord is drawing nigh and heaven is speaking. And heaven is speaking. The Gentile or the heathen world is receiving it, becoming aware of it, but the church is sleeping. Dull. The church is dumb, deaf and stupid. Uh -huh. You know why? Because 
we fail to look at the things happening around us. The Lord Jesus said, when you see the skies are dark, you know it's going to rain. Can't you see what's happening around you? All the prophecies the Lord Jesus spoke in Matthew chapter 24 are being fulfilled right this last iota. The trinity of disaster. Famine, pestilence, earthquakes. I just coined the word this morning. The trinity of disaster. They are happening in a greater manner this past, just in the past one year. We have hardly recovered from COVID-19. And now chicken pox, I'm sorry, monkey pox has come up. And you know, within just two weeks, monkey pox has infected 72 nations in the world. And World Health Organization is debating whether to announce another global pandemic. They are short of making an announcement because they don't want the world to be scared of another pandemic. And there's a fifth wave of this COVID pandemic that's now rising up. 649 deaths in the US so far by the fifth variant. So when, when is it going to stop? Now your eyes see all this, yet we are deaf, dumb and stupid because we just go about our mundane lifestyle and not caring or seeking the things that are above. You know, in Matthew chapter 11, it, the Lord Jesus said like this, there will be greater hope for Sodom and Gomorrah than for all of us. If all the works that were done in Capernaum were done in Sodom and Gomorrah, they would have repented long time ago and still remained in the Lord's day. So the same can be said for us today. With all the great explosion of the word, of healings, of miracles, signs and wonders, and of the baptism of the Holy Spirit, if this all were this were done in Sodom and Gomorrah, they would have attained sainthood and even raptured by now. My dearly beloved brothers and sisters, I put this word of the Lord before you today. And I call your attention to ponder, to think, reflect deeply what you want to do. Where do we go from here? So tomorrow afternoon, there won't be a session. There's supposed to be a teaching session. So Bishop Fondong will make a plan to divide all of you into groups. So one will go to the White House, one to the Capitol, one to the Supreme Court, and the fourth group to the Pentagon. So you spend the whole afternoon prayer walking, fasting, praying, and whatever God puts in your heart to prophesy over the, over the, the places, you just don't rush, you know. Don't just drive around and say, I have done. Don't do that. You have a whole afternoon. Park your car somewhere. Put your feet on the ground. Make contact with the ground. Once you make contact, then they, there are also angels already stationed there. And they will guide you. Amen. Thank you.